let's get talking. Nigerian economic uh, economy in the year 2021 sustained a marginal growth trajectory, making it the largest economy in Africa despite the macroeconomic challenges the country faced uh, is faced with. In spite of the merits of challenges that have confronted the Nigerian economy this year, uh, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, economists have expressed optimism uh, that the country the economy will expand in the coming year, especially through structural and policy reforms capable of unlocking and driving economic growth. In the last three quarters of the year, the economy recorded a real growth rate of 4.03%, year-on-year representing a decline of 0.98% when compared to the preceding quarter, which recorded 5.01%. Following improvement in the non-oil sector and further expansion in the fiscal deficit despite plans to remove subsidy in the coming year. The nation's economy is expected to grow by 2.37% in 2022. We're joining me live in our Lagos studio. He is one of our regular analysts uh, and is a senior economist partner at uh, SPM Professionals, Mr. Paul Alaji. Good afternoon, Mr. Alaji. It's good to see you in Lagos again. Good afternoon and thank you so very much for having me. I wanted to start with the budget. Yes, finally, it's been, pen has been put to paper. Uh, the budget cycle, maintaining the January to December cycle, it seems government is really standing uh, firm behind this. Uh, what are, what's your reaction and maybe a little bit on the assumptions and some of the projections for the budget? First of all, I, I must uh, say a big thank you. President Buhari made it happen again uh, because if the budget were, uh, had not been signed, I don't think people would take Nigeria seriously because next year is a very critical year. When you look at Nigerian history, in recent history since, uh, since 1998, uh, 2002, 2006, 2010, 2018, and now 2022. When you look at the years I mentioned, they are all pre-election year. Pre-election year, Nigeria seems to have a better growth rate compared to the previous years. And um, whatever budget you are passing for pre-election year is so very critical because it will either make or mar the potential growth you will have in the real election year. So 2022 is so very significant. I'm happy the president has signed it. Uh, I thought maybe uh, because of some reservations, which he decided to uh, look no. away from. I also think that for us not to have this insertion and reduction that are necessary, there is need for both the National Assembly and Executive to agree on something to make budget process become part of the Constitution so that we know exact time when um, the MTF must get to the National Assembly for consideration and budget must be presented to the National Assembly. And the total number of period which the National Assembly can sit with the budget for consideration by calling in M M uh, uh, ministry, department, and agencies, agencies of government. government and for them to make presentation so that at the end of the day we can know what we should expect actually. We have seen government been presented this year a uh, national development plan yeah. hoping that the the private sector will, will spend about 85 percent of the money is required and we are talking of trillions hundred of trillions of of naira for execution of of such project now part of the monies government would commit is what you are seeing already in the budget uh, that will be going directly into infrastructure and so many other things that government is proposing for 2022. So on one hand, I am happy. I also think that because Nigeria as a nation even needs structural changes, and these structural changes must be entrenched in the constitution for us to say that we have a better economy. You know, when politics is wrong, I doubt how you are going to have a better economy. Hmm. Uh, I'm looking at this uh, projection. Look, before I get to the projection, we've had lots of economic challenges uh, we've had to grapple with in 2021. Coming from 2020, the advent of COVID-19 and all that has happened with Nigeria's economy, we went into recession again. We're able to come out of recession. And now let's focus on what are these structural and policy reforms that government really needs to look at or focus on at this time? If we are to achieve, I'm always very, uh, very strict or very instructive about this when we talk about inclusive growth. That is what we need to achieve. How do we get to that point? Okay, so how we get to that point is for us to even know where do we want to go. Mm. Where we want to go, there are at least six indicators that should show us areas we want to grow. Yeah. We want to have positive growth, yes. that is GDP. Our population growth rate is between 2.6 to 3%. We need to double that figure for us to say we are truly growing. Mm. And with a positive base year, not negative base year, that we have in 2021. What does that mean? We need to promote policies that will make us grow, because that is the direction. Policy that will make us grow in that, uh, a, 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 having double-digit growth. That on one side. We need to work on education. 
You see, when you look at the system of education we have here, millions and billions of dollars are leaving Nigeria in form of imported education. And I've seen people, even when we have people that have schooled here, people that have schooled and came back to Nigeria, they travel, they leave Nigeria. People say, no, it's not brain drain. Because when we say this is brain drain, they say, no, it's not brain drain, it is brain circulation. And I say, wait, who makes the money? You schooled in Nigeria, possibly somebody has gone to UI, you know, red medicine. At the end of the day, the person spent little or nothing in the real sense, now leaves OAU or UI or ABU or UNN, then travels out. Because the welfare here is not enough for the quality of knowledge that such person has. He goes to Saudi Arabia, for instance, he goes to UAE, or he goes to Canada. Now, when he gets there, some of the persons that he's going to treat will include Nigerians. Where will the money have been? Where will the job have been kept? Where will revenue to government in form of taxes? Where will it have been? Would it have been in Nigeria or Saudi Arabia or whatever country it might be? In the real sense, brain circulation is just to pacify us. We know we are losing hmm. as a country because we give our best to people. So we need to reformulate policy that when we have graduates, even non-graduates, there should be guaranteed job. Look at the numbers National Bureau of Statistics released. The only number released this year was that unemployment figure was 33%. Mm -hmm. Now, don't wait. Don't, don't just listen to unemployment at 33%. Mm -hmm. That is not what got to me. What got to me was that labor force reduced. The question is, what is labor force? So the number, uh, number of people within a population that are willing and able to work of about 200, and 200 million to 206 million people. The number reduced significantly, re reducing by over tens of millions. Where are these people? Is it that they jackpa? Like we use in local language, they <laughs> ran away? Hmm. And these are people that could have uh, impacted the, the population positively. That's on one hand. We now have about 60 or 70 million there about. But to be charitable, say 70 million. Out of about 200 million, you have 130 million people that already are going to depend on 70 million people. Of the 70 million, painfully, 33% are unemployed. When you had that number to those who are not within the labor force, you see that we have more troubles and more concerns in our hands. Leave that. So we need to do more in terms of creating an environment for people to get job. Look at inflation. Yeah. But for the CBN policy that uh, significantly <coughs> reduced uh, what you may want to call um, uh, interest rates, and that has been home for a long time. Monetary Policy Committee kept interest rate at 11.5% yeah. and yeah. refused to change all other parameters. What happens? They kept watching it over time. And we have seen that it's resulting in reduced inflation, yeah. even though it's counter what yeah. you may want to say. But because we are in a unique environment, you have also seen growth uh, coming even though higher reservation because it's negative base here. The true growth rate will be published second quarter report of 2022. That is when you know if the economy is really growing or not. Oh, no. Because you cannot be comparing uh, with uh, I let my people go base here, which is uh, 2020, because we knew what happened during COVID period. So, all it is anything that will gear reduced inflation to 6 to 9%, which is the real target of Central Bank, which will reduce unemployment for 33% and <coughs> reduce it such that we now have less than 5% unemployment rate and we can grow double digits not for one quarter but for 10 years but for 10 years policies that we make government to generate more revenue and reduce borrowing mm. this year is this year 2021 is perhaps the year we have borrowed the most <laughs> in recent history there's a prediction that we're going for another 12 trillion we will go for another 12 trillion when you had that to what we what we hold right now government has recently this year jacked up our our benchmark for debt to uh, to GDP from 25% to 40%. And if you keep borrowing at this rate, the question is, when are we going to pay back? A publication by one of the media houses in our country says between January and May 2021, debt service was 1.8 trillion. 98% of revenue that we collected between January and May. Not my figures, a media house, the information is on the internet. 1.8 trillion naira yeah, yeah. in, in uh, 2021. So when you look at what policy should we then make, government has a lot. How much is Nigerian government generating for maritime? Into the federation account. It needs to be looked at because we strongly believe that there are about 20 to 30 billion dollars we can make more. Go back to the 80s report and check some of the lapses that we have. That on one hand, in oil and gas, how much are we making? The concern I have is that our oil output, we say, oh, Nigeria is blessed with oil flowing with milk and honey. The truth is that 
the milk container might have been reducing without us watching critically. You know why? Mm -hmm. The reason is because our output has started reducing. Libya, a country with very small population compared with Nigeria, now is, is now, as at the last quarter report, they now is, is now the largest, is now the country with largest output. There was a time Angola overtook Nigeria. Libya overtook Angola and now has overtaken Nigeria in terms of output. And we say that, oh, don't worry, um, we are the largest, but there are other countries yeah. overtaking mm -hmm. us. I'm happy that the projection for next year, even though the global oil price may increase, you've seen in the budget we started with, National Assembly have jacked up the price, <laughs> but what they could not jack up is the output. Because I'm worried, how are we, even without having new fields and new uh, areas, new fields to explore, have up to 1.8 in the reality of today? Yeah. So, God Government revenue is a huge challenge. Policies that we support, we have seen Central Bank came with all manner of policies just to save the soul of Naira from being emaciated, say no to BDC. We have seen Infraco within the year 2021 so that they can build infrastructure, all manner of policies that are good. Yeah. But what is missing? Communication, convergence between fiscal, monetary, monetary. and trade authority because there is another authority called trade authority. Over 300 billion Naira every quarter is what we spend to import, not vaccines, but antibiotics. Hmm. And it's not because of COVID. It has been for a while. Don't trust this. Be, go and check trade report by the National Bureau of Statistics. Over 300 billion hmm. consistently. Is what, so what happens to our pharmacists? What happens to our researchers? What happens to our uh, lab scientists? What hmm. happens to all the technical, all the schools, all the research that we have? What happened to them? Can't we start solving this problem locally, locally using the same drugs? But can they come and set up in Nigeria for God's sake? Because if we keep losing Naira this way, I'm afraid uh, we might get to a point uh, that we'll be more concerned about um, about uh, reserves, which I think we are currently having issues with this moment today. Backward integration is what you're talking about. I, I, I see our manufacturers need really, really to look into that so that we can reduce this. Where is the power on. for them? <laughs> Where is the environment for them? In That's 2021, true. by how much have we improved 3,000 to 5,000 megawatts megawatt available for distribution? It is enough to say we generate over 10,000. Good. But are we able to transform the 10,000 megawatt we generate? Can we able to transform Transform them to, to discuss. Yeah. We are not able to. What is available for Cisco? 3,500 to 5,500. Let's be charitable and say 5,000. For which population? 200 200 million. Let us go <laughs> let's, let's, let's wrap up now. I, uh, I'm looking at the non oil sector, and it's somewhere I think that a lot needs to be done. You know, uh, looking at even Africans coming together this time. You remember the IATF and coming together saying that yes we need to speak with one voice and do business with each other now let's look at the non-oil space many will say nigeria economy is already diversified but that's i don't know you're an economist what do you make of it how well are we playing to that people say nigeria economy is already diversified yes in theory but income of government where does it come from that mm. is the real conversation where is mm. government making our income from Money. that on one hand what is the major source of FX to Nigeria in terms of SF receipts? Is still the crude oil. So we need to do something about diversifying so that we can have more equitable sources of income, number one, and have even more for FX. And that will come through exports. You know, my favorite book says, Companion of Fools Shall Be Destroyed. It's not how large Africa of the market is. Who is the producer in Africa? And we will not say because it is Africa, you now bring wood and call it laptops. So it must have some stand level of standardization. Yeah. Is it cocoa will be exporting to ourselves? That is why countries that understand that this is an opportunity, we get power supply correctly and get infrastructure correctly. And that is why I was worried, the same way President Buhari is worried, when Bonnie's meant for Ministry of Transport, in order for us to continue the modernization of uh, the rail project, which I, I, almost all Nigeria have commended this as one of the things that this administration is getting correctly. When the reduction in such, uh, of such money becomes huge concern for me, because I, I think that the way we are having, how do we connect more parts in Nigeria in terms of infrastructure, talking about rail, you know, we have seen Lagos, but we'll see uh, Kaduna, Abuja, we could extend Kaduna to Kano and perhaps to Kastina, and uh, also extend from Ibadan all the way to Abuja. And then we without neglecting the eastern line 
you know, from Portacourt to Enugu, from Enugu all the way to Maiduguri, mm -hmm. and connect somewhere in the middle by crossing through Benue, you know, to Nasarawa, and to Abuja, and to Jos, and, and so many other parts. That will reduce the major driver, something that occupies the driving seat of inflation, and what is it called? The food inflation. But if you are unable to, and we continue to reduce monies here and there, your worry is as good as mine, because by the time government say 2022, we might want to remove subsidy. Even though that is mm. another conversation. Another conversation. Another conversation entirely. Mm. But every opportunity I have, I try to tell government, don't rush into subsidy remover. There's a difference between price increase and price hike. Mm. Price hike is sudden increase. Yeah. Price increase is gradual. gradual. So when you say you are removing subsidy in 2022, uh, I would advise Nigeria to go and borrow or buy belts. <laughs> because the measure, the impact on income of people, not just the rich, because you call them rich. That means they can afford it, whatever rate. But the poor, who is the real driver of your economy? How will they be able to, to, to afford it? You have civil servants, their income are not going to be increased immediately. You also have other workers that are not as rich, because how many percentage of Nigeria is rich? How many are poor? We know the number that is poor, that are poor, we say 42%. Charitable, say 40%. 40% of 200 million people, 80 million people. How will they cope? So, but does that mean we should not remove subsidy? No. I also support subsidy removal until we have local production. And that will mean more refineries. Uh, we have talked about private refineries yeah. coming yeah. mainstream, but that is not sufficient because that is monopolistic. We need to have alternatives, either through modular refineries or privatization of the four refineries we have so that they can in a way compete yeah. with that refineries when they come. When we are able to produce up to what we consume today, that is at a equilibrium. It is at that point we can advise government to remove subsidy. So don't jump to the market when you forgot your basket at home. If you remove subsidy, I'm afraid you might end up uh, uh, having issues. But because labor, I'm, I'm just looking at how labor will receive this, how Nigerians will receive it. And I think the best government can give us is a New Year gift, not subsidy removal. As so, Paul, time. it's always interesting talking to you, but I must tell you that uh, we'll, we'll see in the New Year, of course. I will continue this discussion. Hope it gets better. I'll be speaking to senior economist at SPM Professionals, Mr. Paul Alaje there. Very interesting having you speak around issues around the Nigerian economy and, of course, as we move into 2022. I wish you a happy New Year again in advance. Happy New Year. All right.